In October 2025, Iran began a notable revival within its aviation industry by introducing the Symorg light transport aircraft for certification testing. The Symorg, domestically manufactured, is an extensively modified variant of the Antonov An-140, a design that previously represented ambitious collaborative aeronautical initiatives in the region. This part of Iranian aviation history shows not just technical determination, but also the need to adjust when original suppliers and technical partners are no longer available because of political conflicts. The development of the An-140 started in Ukraine during the early 1990s, a time characterized by both uncertainty and technological developments within the post-Soviet aerospace industry. Ukrainian designers, in collaboration with Russian collaborators, attempted to develop modern regional aircraft capable of fulfilling both civilian and military requirements. First introduced in 1997, the An-140 quickly gathered interest for domestic manufacturing in Russia, resulting in an agreement for the aircraft to be assembled at the Aviacorps factory in Samara. By August 2005, the inaugural flight of the first Russian-assembled An-140 had been successfully conducted. Russia's involvement with the An-140 extended beyond an industrial collaboration. It represented a strategic shift. The nation set aside its own domestic projects, namely Ilyushin's Il-112 and Il-114, in favor of collaborating on the Ukrainian An-140, reflecting a conviction that partnership would yield quicker results and meet pressing transportation requirements. Military requirements prompted the development of the An-140T, a twin-engine transport aircraft designed to carry five tons of cargo over approximately 1,900 kilometers, with design objectives aiming for a maximum payload of six tons. During the early 2000s, Russian defense strategists evaluated the capabilities of the AN-140T in comparison with domestically produced alternatives. The Il-112 Voth, Russia's primary light transport aircraft, was designed to carry up to 5 tons over a distance of 1,200 kilometers or 3.5 tons over a range of up to 2,400 kilometers. The advantage of the AN-140 lay in its proven production history in Kharkiv from 1997 to 2005, during which 11 passenger versions were produced. By 2013, the technical documentation and expertise gained from these production lines were formally transferred to Russia, thereby further strengthening the AN-140T program. Interestingly, in parallel with the Russian narrative, Iran also emerged as a notable participant in the AN-140 story. In 1995, Iranian authorities entered into an agreement for the domestic assembly of the passenger version, designated IRN-140. Production was established at Hisei in Shahinshar, near Isfahan, where Iranian engineers aimed to attain a manufacturing capacity of 12 aircraft annually, adequate to meet domestic demand and potentially establish a presence in international markets. The route, however, was slowed by challenges, irregular financial support from the Iranian authorities, and efforts by Ukrainian negotiators to increase prices following the signing of agreements. Ultimately, external political influences, such as U.S. sanctions and diplomatic pressure, hampered Ukraine's efforts, thereby hindering progress for Iran. The joint efforts in Kharkiv and Shinshar yielded no more than 14 aircraft assembled in Iran, falling significantly short of the original objectives. Among these, merely five or six remained operational by the mid-2010s, highlighting the disparity between expected production and actual operational status. In Russia, prospects for extensive production in the near future diminished. Although certain passenger variants, AIN-114100, were assembled in Samara and briefly operated by the regional carrier Yakushia, logistical challenges and international political factors hindered the progress of the program. When the Ukrainian political landscape experienced a significant transformation in early 2014, resulting in the removal of the government and the commencement of hostilities, Russia's supply of essential AN-140 components was discontinued.
Although it aimed to localize the entire production chain, Samara's Aviacor facility continued to rely on Ukrainian components. Production declined, and by 2016, the assembly line ceased operations permanently, with the closure officially announced in 2017. For the Russian armed forces, only a limited number of AN-14100 aircraft entered service, whereas the transportation variant, AN-140T, never materialized. Iran's aviation strategists, meanwhile, were compelled to reevaluate their approach. Following the loss of three aircraft, one Ukrainian made in 2002 and two Iranian made in 2009 and 2014, confidence in the passenger version eroded, particularly after it was established that a severe engine failure was responsible for one of the incidents. The cumulative impact of these incidents resulted in the total withdrawal of the IRAN-140 from passenger operations. Instead of abandoning the project, Iranian engineers chose to pursue the cargo modification initiative more diligently, converting the AN-140 into the Cymorg, a domestically developed military transport aircraft. Key modifications comprised the installation of a cargo ramp and additional essential adjustments appropriate for freight operations. The program took advantage of Iran's technical expertise in maintaining and modifying foreign airframes, which it had developed over decades of being cut off from new technology. Even though there were big problems with the TV3-117 VMA SBM-1 engines, since Hesa didn't make them in Iran and the Ukrainian company Motor Six stopped making new ones, Iranian technicians managed to keep the planes safe to fly by being creative and using good maintenance. By 2023, Iran completed development and initiated flight tests for the Samorg, shifting its attention to obtaining regulatory sanction. By 2025, authorities sought to obtain a supplemental type certificate from the Civil Aviation Organization of Iran, a necessary step due to the significant modifications applied to the original design. Certification was anticipated to be finalized in 2026, with limited operations expected to commence in 2027. Even as the scope of mass production ambitions was reduced, the program continued to provide essential employment for Iranian aerospace engineers and technicians and delivered practical benefits to the country's logistics and defense infrastructure. The AN-140's complex history highlights the challenges of international industrial collaboration in times of turmoil. Although initially imagined as a mutually advantageous Ukrainian-Russian partnership, the major powers were ultimately unable to sustain alignment of their economic and political interests. The deterioration of relations after 2014 abruptly disrupted supply channels integral to both Russian and Iranian variants of the aircraft. Iran itself encountered successive delays, cancellations, and technical setbacks, initially stemming from policy indecisiveness in Ukraine and subsequently resulting from external pressure exerted by Western powers. Sanctions imposed on engine suppliers have further complicated logistics. Ultimately, Iran's adaptability and perseverance enabled them to achieve a certain degree of success with the fragmented legacy of the AN-140. The engineering personnel, starved of a consistent influx of new projects, focused their efforts on ensuring the operational readiness of the Simorg, despite disruptions in the global supply chain. Despite the nation's inability to assemble large-scale, small-batch manufacturing and meticulous maintenance procedures have kept operational fleets in service. In conclusion, as of late 2025, the Smorg serves as an emblem of regional resilience and innovation within a restricted strategic context. Iran's capacity to sustain and deploy new airframes, despite unpredictable supply disruptions and evolving regulations, demonstrates what can be achieved through effective technology transfer complemented by swift adaptation. The AN-140's legacy is not characterized by thriving collaboration, but by steadfast resilience in the face of challenges. Iran's engineers and aviation policymakers are optimizing the potential of salvageable aspects from disrupted projects. With engine inventory depleted 
and large-scale manufacturing unavailable, the future of the Seamorg depends on sustained innovation in maintenance and inventive adaptation. Nonetheless, its function as a provider for military and civilian transportation requirements continues to be essential. Ultimately, the Seamorg's journey demonstrates how an aircraft developed through international collaboration can endure fractured alliances and multiple setbacks through innovative local solutions. It is a rare instance of resilience rather than optimism, a machine with a lengthy, complex, and ambiguous legacy, yet still operational due to the perseverance of those who refuse to allow external technical obstacles to hinder national aspirations. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us 